Hey, this is Dave from MeRC, and as you can see, I did do it. Yes, I did build the twin prop Volantix Ranger 2000 right here. So here's a larger look at it, a little bit further away. It's hard to get the whole thing in the picture. So now let's get into the details of how I built it and what went into this project. Stay tuned. Okay, starting the conversion on the Volantix Ranger 2000. So what I've done so far is I've removed the pod right here that holds the motor. So I took this apart and then I just put the screws back in it. Here's the motor. Now I'm going to have to replace the stock ESC that's inside here with two ESCs, one for each of the twin motors. So here's what I'm going to be using right here. And these are Turnigy Multistar Opto ESCs right there. Now I don't even know if you can buy these anymore. I just happened to pull them off an old quadcopter. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So we can unplug this motor and remove this ESC and solder these up. I'll have to probably solder uh, these two ends together so that the power leads are soldered together into one and then I'll have to extend these leads out and maybe go to a triple plug where I can plug the motors right in here on the outside and what I plan to do is bring these out through here just like the original ESC was so the original ESC came out and went to the motor right here I'm gonna have this the same way just have the leads come out here and go around and plug on to the leads on the wings that go to the motor so that'll make it fairly simple there so here's the harness for the twin engine setup and you can see that I have the two ESC's right here I've got them kind of taped together so that the heat sinks are on the outside and I've joined both of the inputs for the battery in parallel right here so they're joined right here in parallel also joined the signal wires in parallel because this isn't going to have differential thrust it's just going to have one throttle channel so this one throttle channel will run both ESC's and then at the other end I have these triple plugs which will plug into the motors on the wings so these will come out through the fuselage and then I'll have cables from the motors that plug on here these are the connectors I used right here Okay, let's go ahead and put it onto the fuselage. So I've got the two ESCs installed inside the fuselage, right about in the middle. And I've got the signal cable plugged into the throttle on the mini Pixhawk right there. And then we see the two leads coming out from the ESCs, which have these triple plugs on them, so I can plug the motors right on. And I may go ahead and tie wrap them like right here where they'll be handy to plug right into the wings okay so let's move on and work on the wings so to install the nacelles what I did was put it on the wing about looks like six and a quarter inches from this end of the wing right here so right there six and a quarter inches in the center that allows for either 10 inch props or eight or seven whatever you decide to use next when we take a pencil just draw around the nacelle like this both top and bottom all right now we can remove the nacelle and go ahead and apply glue but before you do that you might want to just make sure this section is free of any dirt in my case I'm gonna to have to remove this lamination film and take that off and if you need to you can sand or just lightly sand the foam too to make sure it will make a good surface for the glue to adhere to so I'm gonna cut away this lamination film and do that alright now that I prepared the surface by removing the lamination film and making sure it was rough enough to accept the glue I'm going to use some of this Beacon Fabric Tack. This is from Walmart. That's where I got it. You can get it other places. So what we're going to do is coat the wing and the nacelle and then let it tack up. All right, and we'll press it on there too after we get some glue on it. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and apply the glue. You may not be able to see this, but that's the way it goes. Okay. Put something under it to keep it from sticking to the paper. And now I'm going to put some on the nacelle. Now there is a top and a bottom to these nacelles, obviously. So the flatter side goes towards the bottom. All right, now let's just go ahead and press it on there. It'll go on nice and easy at first, but when you go to put it on later after it's tacked up, it'll be quite a bit harder. Okay, so we'll let the glue get on both surfaces, pull it off. Now just let it tack up. I would say for about two minutes. Don't go very long because this stuff gets really sticky fast. All right, so it's been about two minutes going on three minutes. Let's go ahead and put it on there. Again, make sure you know which is the bottom. The flatter side goes towards the bottom. And then just go ahead and push it on there. And it's going to go on there very firmly. Now just check and make sure it's perpendicular. You want it to be even with the front edge of the wing. And that's looking pretty good. I don't know if I can push it on much further than that. Let's go back to the bottom side here. Nope, I think that's about it. You might find there's a little bit of gap right in here on the front edge, but that's normal. It has gone back as far as it can to where I had the lines on there. So I don't think it's going to go back any further. That's about it. Okay, now we'll just go ahead and let it dry. Of course, we'll do the other wing the same way. I have mounted the Sunny Sky 1400 kV motors onto the wings on the nacelle right here. Use some of these screws right here. And now I'm working on making up the motor leads. And I'm using these connectors right here, which I'll put on these ends. And that's where it's going to plug onto the connectors on the fuselage. Here are the connectors that I purchased right here. And they came from Hobby King. There's the number. So this is what the cables for the motors on the wings look like. They're all done. And I've got the connectors that I talked about on the ends right here. And these are just some bullet connectors on the other end. So there we go. Time to put them on the wings. And here is the motor wire installed on the wing. So I plugged it into the motor leads right here. And then I used four tie wraps to hold it together. And these tie wraps, actually, well, these two here go around the spar that's in the wing, so they won't pull through. And then the other two, I've made a little plate here. Two plates made out of vinyl siding, and then I just drilled some holes through them. So that'll keep the tie wraps from pulling through the foam. I could have made a channel, but these wings are kind of thin. They're not very thick, and I didn't want to dig into the foam and compromise the wing. So I just mounted it right on the surface like that. Should work pretty good. So I've also made a change in the location of the FPV camera. It used to be down on this hole that was provided by the manufacturer, but I went ahead and made another hole right up top here and mounted the camera on a bracket inside on a piece of wood so that it aims down just a little bit, but also is away from the ground now so that it doesn't get all dirty when I land the plane. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the camera mounted on the piece of wood on the bracket that comes with the camera. Okay, I'm just going to give it a quick test here. I'm just checking the rudder, elevator, ailerons. Okay. That's the flaps. Flight modes. Stabilize mode. Manual mode. They seem to be working. All right, let's try the props. See if they're counter rotating. And it looks like they are. So, initial test complete. Now, if I get some good weather, I'll go out and do a test flight and post that later. But it looks pretty good so far. So, that's it for now, but don't forget to subscribe 
and click that bell icon and also check the notify checkbox so you'll get an email about my next video that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching.